Good morning to you. Thank you for being here today and uh, maybe we'll learn a little something together. We're going to be able to, uh, I think, learn from David uh, some important lessons in the second half uh, of this psalm. So uh, grab your Bible and turn with me to the 27th psalm. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the second half, starting in verse 7. And as I've told you previously, uh, the tone of the psalm changes so dramatically uh, that many people, uh, or maybe not many, but some, uh, some scholars, uh, some people who read this uh, think surely somebody different had to write uh, the second half. The first half is this uh, great psalm of rejoicing and praising and trusting God. And the second psalm, uh, the second half, beginning in verse 7, is one of uh, absolute uh, devastation. Uh, but um, as someone has said, and most of us have uh, learned, uh, fear lives next door to faith. And uh, they, uh, they're real close neighbors. And uh, we can have one moment where it seems like um, I mean, in the same day, you, you, most of you, I think, um, who are watching this uh, will, will uh, can testify to this truth uh, that, um, you know, you can be going along and, um, I mean, it just, you, you couldn't ask for anything any better. Um, and um, in the next second, even, uh, life can uh, just turn upside down on you. And um, you can, you know, the, the bottom just completely uh, fall out. One moment you think, you know, this is great. And the next minute you think, you know, I'm going to die. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, just can be that, uh, that pivotal. And, and so how will David uh, deal with this? What will David do uh, now that uh, we come to this section uh, where, uh, where the bottom uh, does drop out? On him, uh, you see it uh, as we begin again in the twenty seventh Psalm, the seventh verse. Uh, David, uh, these words: "Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice; have mercy also upon me and answer me." I mean, let's let's do a little comparison. Let's look back uh, at verse six: "And now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me." Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Very next verse. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. Uh, and so it's, uh, I mean, obviously uh, how, how quickly, um, you know, uh, the, this, the, the situation has changed uh, in David's life. Again, you, uh, if you want to go ahead and uh, get ahead of me uh, and read the remainder of the psalm, and I'd encourage you to do that. Go ahead and, and look at the rest of it so you know where we're headed. Um, you'll, you'll see that, uh, and, you know, and look at the two halves, from 1 to 6 uh, and from 7 to 14, um, again, are such different things. And so we're going to learn, most of us do pretty good in those first six verses. We know how to handle the mountaintop. Uh, but how, what do we do? How do we, what can we learn from David uh, in dealing with uh, these, these valley uh, experiences when uh, everything uh, falls, uh, falls apart, when fear um, grabs us and just uh, takes over? Uh, again, it, uh, as David in, in this situation obviously uh, is uh, happening to him, maybe he could see or uh, hear uh, his, uh, the enemy, uh, the attacking armies, uh, the soldiers of Absalom, uh, perhaps, uh, moving in on him. Um, you know, you could hear, you know, the, the, the hoof beat of the horses uh, as uh, they got uh, closer in um, to, to him. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe geographically maybe he was um in a situation maybe you know maybe he was in a cave and you know they're 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 you know the, the armies and he didn't have anywhere didn't have an escape route um you know hard to tell but uh whatever has uh changed and so at that point 
he cries out. And so again, you know, we've seen this lesson several times, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, when, when the bottom falls out, when the, you know, when things are going wrong, uh, one of the lessons that I, I hope you've learned in 27 Psalms, uh, I don't know exactly, I don't know how many of them it's been this way. Some of them are not dealing with things like this, but in every one of them, we've seen that, you know, the first thing they did, uh, was they, they cried out to God. Um, you know, we tend to have a, uh, we, we're bad to, uh, try to fix things ourselves, And then, uh, when all else fails, uh, we go to God. Uh, one of the things we've seen again, you know, go back and read these 27 Psalms, uh, and in the Psalms where we have something along these lines happening, uh, what we have is a picture, uh, of, of a person, usually David, um, who, immediately um, he goes to God uh, and you know, he doesn't again try to remedy things himself. Uh, he immediately asks God to come down uh, and to have mercy uh, on him. Uh, and uh, he, he says, uh, you know, in verse eight, he says, when thou said, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Uh, and so David, you know, he, he reminds God here. Uh, he says, Lord, I've, I've, I've always sought your face, uh, not just when, um, you know, I, I was in uh, times of trouble. Uh, he, you know, he says, I'm not one who just comes to you when things uh, go wrong. And so we have a second lesson uh, that, um, that that we need to take away from this. The first was, uh, again, that when he found himself in whatever this predicament is, he immediately goes to the Lord, uh, and cries out for mercy. But the second lesson is that he wasn't a stranger. Uh, he, he wasn't a stranger uh, to God. Uh, I, I love the old story that kind of fits, kind of doesn't. Uh, but uh, they say the great football coach, Vince Lombardi, uh, you know, a lot of these guys, they score and they do all these celebrations that he told his players uh, when, you know, when you get to the end zone, act like you've been there before. Um, and the same thing with, uh, with, the, the troubled times in our life, uh, when we go to God, we need to have been there before. Um, again, I, I don't want to have to introduce myself to God uh, when I need healing, when my children need uh, some intervention. You know, I, you know when I, I don't want to have to reintroduce myself and go to God and say, Lord, I know you haven't heard from me in a while. Uh, I don't want to be with my relationship with God. And, and everybody listening to this has somebody this way. If, if your phone rings and you got caller ID and you look at their and you see their name or you pick up the phone and you hear their voice, uh, the first thing that runs through your mind is well, what do they want? Because uh, I only hear from them when they want something. I, I don't want my relationship with God to be that way, and I don't think you do either. Uh, and so David says, you know, Lord, I, I'm not one who just calls on you uh, in, in times of trouble, uh, that I have a regular walk and a regular uh, relationship with you, and I've been obeying uh, your uh, directive. Uh, I regularly, not just in the bad times, but in the good times, uh, seek your face. And he says, uh, if we continue, uh, he says, Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast, thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me. And so uh, I'll point out to you again those words, thou hast been, past tense. Uh, David says, you, you know, you've always been there for me. And, uh, you know, I know that, um, you know, that you are uh, that kind of God. And I need to know in this case uh, that, uh, that you are, uh, you are here, that you are uh, available to us. Uh, and one of the things that that little phrase, hide not thy face from me, um, usually uh, is referring to uh, when we are out of fellowship uh, with God. 
uh, when, uh, again, when his face is, uh, and throughout the Bible we have pictures of, of uh, God's face being toward us. Well, those are times of blessings. Um, when his face is turned from us, uh, that is a time when, uh, when our fellowship with God uh, has been damaged because of, uh, because of sin in our life. And so the next thing that David does here uh, in, in seeking God, again, he, he went to God first. Uh, I did it again. I don't know. I did it yesterday. I don't know why I bothered pointing at the screen like you can see it. Uh, he, he went to God. Uh, he, uh, it, it, he had an ongoing relationship with God. It wasn't just uh, in times of trouble. Uh, but then the, the next thing he did, he says, hide not thy face far from me, which is David's basically in, 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 uh, in saying, Lord, I want, you know, I want to make sure you're not angry at me. I want to make sure I'm not in this situation because uh, that, uh, that I have done uh, something that, um, that I shouldn't have. Uh, you know, I want you to reveal to me anything in my life that is, that, that if there's something in my life that may be causing this trouble, uh, I need to see it. I need to know about it. Uh, and so uh, three quick lessons we learned this morning uh, in dealing with, uh, with the difficult times in our life. Uh, hear, O oh Lord, when I cry, we, we go to God. Uh, second of all, uh, verse 8, uh, when you said, seek my face, I did. Uh, we don't wait till we're in trouble we don't wait till we're in those predicaments to, to, to talk to God. We have an ongoing conversation with him. Uh, and that's one of the things I think is important about that. You know, people, again, question how this psalm is so great in the first half and, and just instantly flips in the second half. Why? I think it's because David had an ongoing conversation going with God. He didn't have, you know, he, you know when things were going great, he was talking to and about God. When things fell apart, he just carried on the conversation. And so we go to God. We have an ongoing conversation with God. It's not uh, something new. And then the third thing David does that we need to learn is David says, Lord, show me if there's anything in my life, anything I've done uh, that's causing uh, this problem, uh, causing me to be in this situation. And so those are the three of the first things we learn uh, from David. I hope they'll uh, be an assistance to you. I hope they uh, help you. I hope nobody needs them. I hope you never. I hope you never need what we're going to learn uh, in the in the last half of this psalm. Uh, but the reality is, I, I'm afraid uh, you probably uh, probably will, and maybe even uh, before uh, the day is done. You never know. Your day may be like David, just that quickly uh, that things could change. Uh, and so, you remember those first three steps. Uh, you go to God. Uh, you start, even if you're not in trouble today, uh, you go ahead and start a conversation with God and, and have a relationship with him. And then finally, you, you make sure uh, that, uh, again, that it's not something in your life that has caused uh, that, uh, that predicament. I hope you learned something today. I hope it will help you. Uh, join us tomorrow morning, and we'll continue uh, looking at how David handled uh, this predicament uh, of whatever nature, this tragedy, uh, devastation that was taking place uh, in his life. All right, have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.